Good evening, and welcome to Meet the World, a literary series programmed by the National Centre for Writing that aims to celebrate ongoing connections with international writers and translators by sharing their writing and ideas with new readers. My name is Megan Bradbury. I'm an author and former bookseller based in Norwich, and tonight I have the great pleasure of introducing you to two writers who've been taking part in a virtual writing residency at the National Centre for Writing, Liz Breslin from Dunedin in New Zealand and Marcin Wilk from Krakow in Poland. We'll be discussing the subject of viewing the world from afar. At a time when so few of us are able to travel or even leave our own neighbourhoods, we've had to find other ways to satisfy our wanderlust. Many of us have turned to books and the internet. In January this year, The Guardian reported that more than 200 million books were sold in the UK in 2020, which is the biggest volume rise in the books market since 2007. And in 2020, our internet use more than doubled. Last year, Edinburgh Zoo saw its webcam views rise from 100,000 to 5 million per month. And the company Skyline Webcams, which has over 1,000 place-based webcams around the world, saw a rise in page views from an average of 70 million to 120 million in March last year. But can virtual travel, be it through books or the internet, ever stand in for the real thing? What effect does it have on the imagination? What creative possibilities does it offer to writers and researchers? These are just some of the questions I'll be putting to my guests this evening. But let me introduce them first. Liz Breslin writes poems, plays and stories. In 2020, she co-created the Dunedin UNESCO City of Literature's Possibilities Project and was the winner of the Kathleen Grattan Award for a sequence of poems. Her second poetry collection, In Bed with the Feminists, will be published by Dead Bird Books this year. Marcin Vilk is a writer, journalist, blogger, and the author of two biographies and one book of historical reportage. For many years, he was a curator of the book industry at the Conrad Festival in Krakow, and in 2020, he won the UNESCO City of Literature Prize. Welcome to you both. Um, I'd like to start, if I can, by just speaking a bit with you individually about your writing projects during the residency. Um, and I'd like to come to Liz first, if I can. Hello, Liz. Um, hey. You've been you've been using the uh, Hawk and Owl Trust Nest Cam at Norwich Cathedral um, as your way into writing a new collection of poems. Could you introduce us to that project and just tell us what you've been doing? Um, well, it started as a comparison between Dunedin and um, Norwich, and I guess we have the Royal Cam where we look at the albatross. Um, and like you said, there's the Hawk and Owl Cam there. Um, I was originally also going to look at the camera in the octagon in Dunedin, which is like our city centre, um, and then the one in the market there in Norwich. But um, yeah. that one is defunct. And for some reason, the Norwich City Council is not too keen on me looking at the CCTV that they look at the rest of the city from. <laughs> so my project naturally narrowed down to um, just sitting at the top of the cathedral and um, having a look at Norwich through that lens. So that's what I'm doing. I love the idea um, and I'm, I'm one curious about your um, role as a poet and you're obviously very well practiced in the art of restriction in terms of form. Um, how does that compare? Does that feel like a comparable uh, kind of problem to have as a poet finding that your uh, project, which had all these facets, had to be kind of slightly narrowed? Oh, yes, that's a really good point. Um, I do feel it's kind of like an exercise every day in the imagination. And it's amazing mm -hmm. how far it's been able to go. Um, I did, yeah. I, I used some of this um, idea in a workshop with the Lit from the Insiders, who's a group of, I think they're 14 to 17 year olds, maybe, um, mm -hmm. in Norwich. And it was so interesting to see we all started with the same very small viewpoint um, and came up with so many different moods and ideas from it and I think um, yeah you're right it speaks a lot to the nature of poetry. Is it something that they had tried before was that the first time they'd ever used um, technology in that way to create work the children that you worked mm, with? I, um, I don't know I think that's maybe more a question for them but um, they hadn't, some of them hadn't heard of Big Brother. So um, that was fun going back to the Big Brother house <laughs> in um, early 
into the first Big Brother That's house so lucky. in 2000. We went there for some, I know, right? What would the world be like without it? But um, no, it was really good. It was, you know, I think it's a, a different way of using the visual prompts. So. Yeah. And um, I, from reading your uh, column that you write for the, the Otago Daily News, um, where you mentioned that actually a lot of part of what you've been doing is waiting for the peregrines to um, appear in the nesting box where the webcam is situated. So a, a lot of this time you haven't have you haven't had a view of any birds. Is that right? You've had Megan, just the platform. I, I waited. I waited <laughs> eighteen days to see a peregrine there, <laughs> and um, now I've seen not one but three. So I'm pretty excited about that. But um, yeah, there's a lot of other places I went actually visually, but also just spinning on from that. Like I. Um, and probably as qualified as most people to speak on the best bacon roll in Norwich. I think we'll probably have to have a whole segment just for that because that's quite an important uh, thing to know uh, as a local person, although I am a vegetarian, so it doesn't help me very much. But um, <laughs> that's great. Um, you Working with webcams and working with virtual formats, it's not the first time you've done this, is it? So you, you uh, co-created the Possibilities Project uh, last year. Could you talk a bit about that and how that compares with your experience with this residency? Um, oh, that was so fun. I mean, it was the technology that we were using it in a very different way. Um, it, was, it was such a basic project, I actually nearly didn't um, pitch it to them, but I'm so pleased that I did because it... Um, it has really turned into something that was quite joyful, I think, during the lockdown. What it basically was, was we um, had a poem of Vishwava um in which she talks about possibilities. So um, it has the refrain of, I prefer, I prefer, I prefer, I prefer oaks along the Vata. I prefer, I prefer the absurdity of writing poems to the absurdity of not writing poems was one of <laughs> my favourite lines in her original. So with the absurdity of lockdown, I guess we all took that and we wrote poems about our own specific preferences and possibilities. And um, the project was really that we collected those um, and for people who wanted to work on their poems and edit them, I worked with them mm. to do that. And for people who wanted to record them, we had a platform for that. And for people who didn't want to, we got other people to record them. Like we had some um, South Korean poets participate. And so we got some local school students to record their poems in English because they um, didn't necessarily want to record them in translation so it was such a cool project we thought we might have a couple of weeks worth of poems and I think it went six weeks in the end it's really cool oh that's amazing and and that that's uh, the kind of project project that you couldn't um do without it being a virtual premise um I'm kind of interested in over this past year what what has been lost and what has been gained with with creative projects um and obviously so much has been lost with loss of contact with creative mm. communities and one another in um, physical form. Um, but this experience of being able to reach out to other nations and other so many different types of people that one would normally would never normally get a chance to meet, obviously opens up lots of creative possibilities as well. Um, and I'm interested in how far particularly um, the virtual uh, residency here has changed your process as a poet. And whether this the the process of using virtual means and the kinds of watching and the kinds of you know note taking the kinds of just timetable you're having to follow has that altered how you work or does it feel very much part of how you would normally do things anyway? I I don't think my process has changed as such. I I think. Um, I think it's been a reminder of the importance of small noticing. Um, mm. And I think, I mean, obviously the time frame has been different. So I've been, uh, it's been lovely actually when I have been getting up in the middle of the night with an idea in my head, I've had something to do, like somewhere to go because I've had the webcam during <laughs> the daytime. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, I don't, I... Because some of the time I live 
um, outside the city, um, I have always valued um, the internet as a way to connect, you know, because I haven't been able so easily to access um, city culture. And um, that's been a real positive, actually, in our smaller communities, that lockdown um, brought us many more connections here. Mm -hmm. I, th I think that's a similar, from what I understand of um, people here at least, um, mm. and people people who live rurally, that suddenly they're seeing you know potential, and like you say, this sort of small noticing, they're not mm. being able to not reach the bigger cities or the places where you would normally associate with, you know, art art events or things like that. They're they're being able to create things in a local way that you would hope then we'll be able to carry on you know, in the future when, when things go back to normal. Um, this idea of normality um, is interesting in terms of your project as well. I mean, being based in uh, New Zealand where you are and having, from what I understand it, a very different um, uh, experience of the pandemic in terms of the sorts of lockdown, lockdowns that you've had um, uh, in that you seem to uh, have a lot more sort of freedom, social freedom at least in New Zealand because um, of the way that the pandemic's been handled there. Um, and so I love the idea that by using a webcam and, and being focusing on a, a bird platform so high above Norwich, I get this impression of you as like a free bird soaring over Norwich, um, <laughs> uh, looking at the rest of us who are all in lockdown and, and in our houses. Has, has the experience of being looking at us from a place like New Zealand fed into the writing, do you think? Or is that too... I it, to what? <laughs> to, 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 too tenuous, too tenuous a connection. <laughs> Do you see no, yourself it's as a not really. I am I the peregrine? I have not been doing very much flying. I've been doing a lot more sitting. Um, <laughs> I have been. It's really funny actually because on one hand I've been really nervous on like sitting up there in judgment. You know, like it's one thing to sit in observation of what you see, but to be careful not to um, let that spill over because I have no idea what your lockdown experience is like over there. But, mm. I mean, I have really, in a lot of ways, no idea what the lockdown experience is for neighbours two streets over because, you know, yeah. that's the nature of a lockdown, right? Um, yeah. um, but what is fascinating about that as well is because part of my project is to be really voyeuristic. I'm sitting in the mm -hmm. discomfort of um, looking and poking and like some of the poems are all about, you know, I found real details about real people that I'm just like ripping off the internet and um, <laughs> uh, here, here they are in, in the poem with, you know, no permission and no, no context really. Um, mm. And I mean, but that's the nature of it. It's for it's freely available, and I can find them on the internet, and there they are in my poem. The other thing that I found is actually, if by poking around in other people's lives, has actually made me poke around more specifically in my own life in a way that normally mm -hmm. I don't do in poems. And so, to go back to what you said would be a difference in that, I think mm -hmm. that might be one thing. Yeah, I've poked around differently in my life. <laughs> should, should I read some for you? Oh, please do, yeah. That would be lovely. Okay, so um, what I've been doing is kind of writing a sequence a little bit every day, and I thought I would write just first. I thought I would start here just before it started snowing because it's... Um, mm. I've started on the weather and I remember that that's a very British thing to do. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> so this is called Precipitate. Dan Holly says that a significant drift of lying snow is likely today. And that's poetry. And also I believe him because he wore a very nice burgundy knitted jumper, though it looked a little bit acrylic in that white Christmas weather explainer he did. And though I've stalked him on Twitter, 
the only vaguely cancellable thing I found was the shopping forecast image he shared. Asda, slight to moderate, heavy crowds by evenings, M&S and co-op, fair. I check the webcam and the prevailing weather is dark and wind and I set my alarm for sunrise in Norwich. I talk to my son who had another party while I was away. The owners, I say, have been in touch about mowing the lawn and I make it sound like these things are connected. Yesterday I forwarded him a text that said, sounds like there's a bit of a party going on at your place, was wondering if you were able to ask Dylan to turn it down considerably. I have a 4.30 start in the morning, not to mention everyone else in the neighbourhood. I go to the supermarket, I go to the beach, see pale seals, poaka, hold hands in waves and aisles and think about snow and snow and snow and Dan in his forecast slash poem writes about erosion in the usual vulnerable places. And in 2019, Simon Crawford of the Russell Street Community Area Residents Association called for more CCTV, saying, surely, surely, he said, the good and taxpaying people of Norwich have the right to feel protected from the less than decent members of the society who reside among us on a daily basis. I do surveillance on Simon and think about the word trickolate and try not to think about the party and the words irresponsible and mother and check the night again for snow. And the Russell Street Community Area Residents Facebook page says that Simon is secretary slash crime and unrelatedly he wrote in 2011 on a page called Match of the Day to all the Match of the Day pundits, you have to agree that on today's showing Norwich City are here on merit 100%. The result against MK Dons was odd, to say the least. However, we will now concentrate on the Premiership and hear us when we say we are here and we are here to stay. And more relevantly, perhaps the published on Facebook Russell Street Community Area Residents Association minutes note that a resident reported that the grass cutting contractor had not mown the outside edges of Mancroft Green and the tale of a city council housing official removing no ball game signs in Dolphin and Watson Groves. And news and news and still no snow. Two Springer Spaniels are missing, Bonnie and Tilly. The Eastern Daily Press says, and here the most famous dogs in the South are Spaniels, are dice and weed, lost slash taken, says a billboard, on almost every major highway intersection, and imagine the found and prodigal party, and there is a rare place, the EDP says, for rent for £1,700 a month in Cathedral Close. Dan tells of a sudden stratospheric warming event, and I read it as a sudden stratospheric warning. That's so, um, thank you. May I go on and just tell you the next one? It's much oh, shorter. Please, please do. Okay. Uh, so, um, this is, it snowed. So, after Julian of Norwich, this is the 17th revelation. All will be snow, all trees, all branches, all blades, all pitches, all roads, all schools, all will be closed, all will be slid, all sledged on, balled up, thrown, all will be new, all numb, all fluffy, all sog, all will be snow, father snow, mother show, angels, O oh Lord, all seep, all heart, all breath of dew, all hold, all hold, all will be, all will be. All will be snow. That's so wonderful. And you've captured, particularly with the, the snow poem, um, exactly what it's like to live here and, and be waiting for snow. It doesn't snow here very uh, often. Um, and so when there's a slight hint that it might, and often often they'll hint it and it doesn't happen and it's really disappointing. Yeah. So when the snow, you know, this, this goes on for days before, you know, the snow does come. And when it does, everyone's like, it's snowing and we're like yes i know it's snowing but it's it's such an exciting event here <laughs> um <laughs> but it, it does um make me think as well that uh obviously you're not here in norwich you're in new zealand and um i imagine the weather is very different where you are um but the the opportunity to um do a residency in a virtual way i'm guessing means that your research process is very different or at least the kinds of um, details that you uh read in your uh, first poem 
um, other sorts of details that you wouldn't necessarily pick up just walking around the city. These are things that you're getting through online resources, the EDP, I imagine, and, and various um, uh, uh, newspapers and chat rooms and things. Um, so that's incredibly fun, is it? Do you enjoy, it? it's more like an assembling of, of things that you notice from reading online sources? Yes, definitely. And, and um, it leaves me with gaps that I really like. I, I don't really know anything about tourist Norwich, but I believe there are a million places I could find that out. Like I'm doing, I'm writing a virtual mm. walk of the um, city, and so just now I've been trying to walk around on the um, on Google Maps a bit, and it's really very pretty. But I haven't seen any of that because I, you know, I wouldn't have. I, I haven't seen that from the top of the um, cathedral. So um, yeah, I'm only just getting to the um, ground level. I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's it's so wonderful to hear about your project. We'll, we'll talk about it more when we um, open up the discussion between all of us, but thank you for uh, describing uh, that to us. Um, Martin, if I could come to you next. Um, uh, you're looking, Liz has described using uh, virtual sources of webcams as her way into Norwich. Um, you're looking at bookshops and, and books, which of course are another portal to other places um, that people use and people have been using certainly through this pandemic. Um, can you talk a bit about what you've been researching yeah sure um, you know I as a, a journalist and a book enthusiast uh, I um, I I'm um, you know lover of a bookshop so uh, I go there very often and uh, I have my favorite bookshops in Krakow not only in Krakow, but also in Berlin, when it's not so far from Krakow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love the city and the, 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 they have also a lot of uh, very nice independent bookshops. Sometimes uh, they are very special, specific, uh, but um, it was very, you know, uh, 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 this project uh, is for me a chance to see at the Norwich bookshops, because I, I read a little bit about bookshops around the world and also about the Norwich as a, you know, city specific, let's say, uh, as for now, specific city uh, with many uh, independent bookshops and many also second hand bookshops. So uh, I try to imagine uh, myself if I could say something new or get to know something new or maybe i could compare you know uh, uh, cities i mean krakow and norwich in the prism of uh, bookshops so yeah um uh, uh, and i thought it, it would be nowadays because of this pandemic uh, uh, very nice to see norwich through not only bookshops but through social media media try to speak with people who work there who own the bookshops because it's very often they are the owner and they work there um, uh, and you know the, 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 this thing that that's what I'm doing and can you tell us something a bit about um, how independent bookshops are very different from big chain stores in your experience oh there are there are many differences i mean they are first of all they are not as the machine i would say i mean when you when you go <laughs> into big uh, big shops it's like you you can be nobody and if you don't want to be nobody you 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 go into bookshops independent bookshops of course it it might for many people and it is for many people a little bit frightened to go there because they are very aware of you know this contact with other people because the world uh, nowadays um, is not very uh, um, you know it's uh, sometimes we are forced not to contact each other and this covid thing pandemic uh, also is almost the same the, the, the same situation so so bookshops uh, are i would say alive uh, uh, they are very lovely <laughs> they have their mm -hmm. own smell uh, it's very specific smell uh, um, you know the, the uh, it differs in, in in many places and uh, they have people there i mean 
well, I, ha I have to, I have to say it also. I have to add it that, of course, in you know the 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 the, the, the big stars are have also people, but um, yeah. uh, they cannot do everything as people in small bookshops. They don't have so many opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think. Um... Yeah, you've really hit the nail on the head there, this idea that um, the bigger the shop, I think the less freedom they have over maybe what they stock and who is able to contribute to, to that. Um, as a former bookseller mm -hmm. myself, and I've worked for independent shops and um, bigger stores, uh, is to have, um, that it comes down to the operating system. As soon as you have a small independent shop that, you know, you have complete control over what you order, and often the members of staff will will have control over what's ordered. It's not just um, an algorithm, or it's not just a program which will automatically, um, excuse me, restock um, bestsellers and things. Um, and it's interesting, isn't it, with a bookshop when you go in, you they're all so different. Um, you get a sense of not just maybe the owners and the staff's tastes, but you get a whole sense of maybe what the community is interested in. Um, and yes. that tells you a lot about the place that you are in, doesn't it? And a, a, a shop, I imagine, in Norwich is going to be very different to one in Krakow. Um, how have you found that then researching um, researching this without being able to actually step foot in a, in a bookshop in a physical sense? Do you feel like you're able to get that uh, impression of, of, what, mm -hmm. of what the community is like without being able to mm -hmm. be there in person? Oh, I think the word impression is good word in this context. And I, I would also use the word imagination, which is a very tricky word because, you know, on one hand, it's good to, to, to imagine as a creator, as an artist, uh, uh, you need, uh, you need this all the time uh, during your work. But, um, well, I'm, well, I, I wouldn't call myself. It's I'm in the process, so okay. But I <laughs> I didn't call myself like year on or two years ago as an as a writer because you know as a journalist I I I write some projects, so I write book on specific topic and that's all. But this situation, this pandemic, uh, was for me a chance to think what actually uh, I do in my life, because I cannot be as a reporter to go to the place and to speak and to see on my own eyes uh, and experience everything. I have to imagine, or at least I have to add, you know, this tension between reality and my imagination of the things, of the places, of bookshops, which is good because um, uh, you have to depend on your you know uh, points of view on your uh, um, um, experience on, on on your many many things which might be very helpful in seeing things but on the other hand oh, okay I, I behave as a normal reporter so i i tried to get to know as much as i as i could so i i made uh, uh, interviews with people i checked everything on social media by the way it's very interesting because social media is something against you know the idea of independent small bookshops about this physical contact and now you have to because the, everything is closed you have to use social media in order to to to, to catch your uh, your customers your readers so but 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 it might be also a chance because it's also the tool that you you can contact and uh, maybe some new people why not? Maybe some new people can get some information about small independent bookshops because not everybody knows how lovely they are. So, <laughs> <laughs> and did you find with um, researching the bookshops in Norwich that that step into a more virtual existence as opposed to a kind of local community role that they have has that step been easy for them or has that been quite challenging? It depends on, 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 on bookshop. I mean, and uh, uh, it's very hard to be honest. It's very hard to speak about it because I'm a little bit, because it's always people. So sometimes it's like, 
there are some introverted people and also introverted i could i could say introvert uh, independent bookshops <laughs> uh, and uh, they, they don't display very much so it, it's easy to to, to check uh, which uh, and uh, bookshops uh, you you can see only for example um, books uh, in their for example in instagram account uh, and there are some Oh, Henry is a former actor, so Henry has a very good idea to show himself. Henry from uh, the Book Hive, um, the yeah. owner of the Book Hive. So, uh, also uh, Leanne from uh, from from very nice children bo bookshop, uh, um, uh, right? Uh, uh, book book bags and dragon tales. Uh, she has also a great idea to to to, to display herself uh, on social media. But, but it's okay if you like it. But on the other hand, maybe um, for for the other readers, uh, because there are also many people who who doesn't who, who don't like social media, being in social media, and I understand it mm. uh, uh, very well. Although I work with social media because I also I have a portal about books and have many discussions with my readers and so on. Uh, but if you don't like, that's okay because you. you <laughs> that's the thing you are uh, uh, the aim of being independent is that you can do what you want to do so well mm. so do you, do you get the impression in that case that um that it might be that some bookshops have had to acquire new skills uh, but actually that will be quite helpful once this pandemic is over they'll be you know they'll get their bookshops back and people will come back in a physical sense they'll be able to do events again um but yet that the um virtual mm -hmm. opportunities as well might carry on and actually that might be um not to say um any of this has been good but that might be a positive um thing to carry forward once this pandemic is finished that they'll 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 have uh skills that they didn't have before yeah definitely i i think so but well we we have to we have to be careful about everything i mean and that's what what is the most worth in this situation to be careful to think and to see what is useful not what is not useful maybe to mm. appreciate something which we didn't appreciate in the past so mm. as many well, it's from different contexts, but maybe it might be helpful uh, for men, many uh, psychotherapists would say that the the best uh, thing in depression is that uh, it's finally over one day uh, for good. <laughs> for And uh, I think the best way in this pandemic situation that it will be over one day, hopefully it will. Um, of course, it might change something. We don't know yet how much. Uh, uh, we look with hope and, you know, with this, you know, darkness. But, but on the other hand, as Virginia Woolf said about darkness, that it's something which might bring uh, uh, hope, right? Because it's the mm. it's it's the um, it's the situation when we might to see ourselves in new lights in new perspective so maybe mm. i don't answer very precisely what what you ask because um, uh, the reason is i don't know what future brings but uh, i think uh, you know that the we we can talk we can think about ourselves what it's good what it's not that we can slow a little bit everything because what maybe in Norwich is not very visible, but in Krakow uh, and in this, in mm. this East, Eastern Europe, we see how, how the world is fast and growing all of mm. this stuff. Uh, uh, and now we can, we, can, we can appreciate some things and maybe, and, and, um, uh, and maybe this is, this is the, the, the most important thing in this, uh, in this COVID uh, situation, yeah. Um, and uh, before we kind of open it up for a more general discussion, could you um, maybe describe the uh, bookshop scene in Krakow for anyone who hasn't been there? Um, a busy one, I'm guessing. <laughs> um, maybe my, my favorite one, because the, there, are, there are quite a lot of bookshops and the, the, it was very nice that you said that uh, bookshops uh, are very, you know, are... Uh, 
associated with the society. So, but I, 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 I was wondering if, if it's true uh, um, in regards to Krakow. So we have, uh, we have very, very nice, for example, muscle books. I think that this is the first, uh, at least probably now this muscle because I, uh, I, I, I showed it uh, on Instagram account in, in Norwich Writers Center and Liz uh, wrote, oh, I miss this bookshop very much. Muscle is is uh, American, Polish American bookshop, very nice uh, in all building. Uh, not very far from Masolit, uh, if you are, if you would uh, reach the Krakow, uh, uh, is um, Characters Bookshop. Uh, Characters mm -hmm. is also small independent uh, publishing house. They have great, you know, they, they for example, published Rebecca Solnit, who I love. Um, and um, yeah, I would also recommend the Revolutionibus. Uh, quite small, also independent uh, bookshop. You can you can drink coffee there, if you like to, and it's not very far from the main market square. Yeah, so maybe at the beginning free of this, and it's like it's enough for two days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I so want to go. Um, and um, do you have any? Um, I mean, I'm assuming the answer to this is is merely we just need to spend more money in them. But um, in order to protect these <laughs> bookshops, which are which are so precious, um, and give us so much more than just the supplying of of you know of goods that we need, they are a community hub. They are creative exchange places. They're for many people social places to talk to like-minded people that they might not get the chance to do anywhere else. Um, how do we protect them once they're open again and once they're accessible? Um, what can we do other than spending all of our available money on books, um, which is of course what we should be doing? Um, what can we do? <laughs> um, well, there are, there are many things. Actually, the, the, because I, I, I spoke with my, my friend from this character bookshop and Kasia, uh, who works there, told me that they had great December. I mean, they, they sold many books. So maybe it started to change something be, because people mm. uh, who cannot go outside, who cannot travel to, I don't know, wherever uh, uh, they uh, they start to see you know local communities and also uh, independent bookshops and they want to support them because it's like you know uh, in, a, in a specific situation and I think what what is what 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 should we do what should we do? We shouldn't stop it. We, sh we shouldn't support uh, uh, independent bookshops. Uh, so we we, we shall uh, support them all the time. Not only, of course, uh, spending all the money, but but it's obvious for people who uh, who love books that they that they spend a lot of money. Uh, but they should do it in uh, independent bookshops. Uh, but also, you know, there are. It, the, the, they organize very nice events, uh, discussion, uh, you know, conversation with writers and have many uh, nice ideas. For example, in Characters Bookshop on Saturday, I, I bought uh, a very nice poster. And uh, it's uh, it, it's also sometimes the way that you you, you can uh, um, you can uh, help. Uh, so um, yeah, don't stop to support small bookshops. I mean, because we are now in, we we are aware of everything, and uh, after after this uh, situation. Uh, we have to be also um, aware and consciousness about uh, about small bookshops. So I think that's what we should yeah. do, not yeah. to stop. Okay. <laughs> do not stop. <laughs> that's good advice. Um, before we uh, uh, talk about some more subjects, would you mind reading as a part of your project that you've been working on? Martin, yeah, uh, with, yeah, yeah, with pleasure. Uh, I, I read this virtual walking uh, um, of the independent uh, bookshops path in Norwich, of course. 
if it weren't for the obvious issues, I'm writing this in February um, 2021, there is still a pandemic. I would have arrived in Norwich in the afternoon or by the evening. I would probably start walking around the city the next day, but I won't do that, unfortunately. I can only look at the independent bookshops through the prism of social media and Google Street View, for example, from far away Krakow, my home city. I start from an important point on the city map, the cathedral. From there, it's two steps to the first of the bookshops I'm interested in. What does Tombland Books or Tombland Street look like in the morning? If I'm uh, navigating the map correctly, it must be quite bright, as that's when the harsh early sunlight comes in through the windows at this time of year. I like that when it's warm and presumably dry, the books are displayed outside the shop. At least they were, as various photos on Instagram and Google Street View proof. I hesitate to go inside. It's two floors of second-hand books, lots of academic items. If I go in, there is a risk that I will stay there for the rest of the day. However, I do go in, but only for a few minutes or so. About a three-minute walk away, thank you, Google Maps, for the precise time, there is a Durham House bookshop at Elm Hills. It is, a danger, it is as dangerous as Tombland books. I see lots of interesting, not always obvious, reading suggestions in the images of Instagram. Well, I'd probably be tempted by Sylvia Plas, the Berger, for example, although I'm not sure if it's still available in that cover I saw on the bookshop's Instagram profile in December 2020. I would stay in Durham House Bookshop for a while, not so long, as the next points of the walk await me. It takes me three minutes to reach my next destination, and I'm just beginning to suspect that everything in, is, in Norwich is close. The book Hive, at which I have just arrived, is located on the corner of London Street and Opai Street. The bookshop is situated in a characteristic semicircular three story building. I found many nice shots in the internet. The floors await me here and also, as in the case of previous bookshops, I would be afraid to enter as I would need several hours to browse. It would also be great to come when Joe Hedinger is there. Joe is a bookseller, I met him on Zoom, well, pandemic times, and he is one of the most fascinating interviewers I have ever met in my life. As for now, I'm watching the book hive through the lens of social media and YouTube videos. I particularly like what's going on upstairs. You can also sit down with a book and immerse yourself in it for a few hours. I would probably do that. I should now move towards Gerald and the Millennium Library, but I'm going to add one more place to this route, Book Bugs and Dragon Tales, the children's bookshop. And instead of going directly to Gerald, I'm seduced by the walk down Opai Street, so I choose the longer route. Walking a little more, I would probably unwittingly draw comparisons between Norwich and Krakow, where I live, and which suddenly, though I never threw thought of it that way, turns out to be quite a big city. By the way, you can learn a lot about book bugs and dragon tales from social media. The profile on Instagram shows not only the books they offer, we also get to know David and Leanne Fritt, the owners of the bookshop. What's more, you can even see a special COVID song on YouTube, which is Timber Hill's new informal anthem. It's called The Musical. After visiting the open-air market and browsing among the second-hand books, I walk towards the Millennium, the Millennium Library. It's not a small bookshop in a charming little building, but a huge modern library. Still, though, there are a lot of books to be found here. Thank you, Martin. That's amazing. I, I love that... Um... Uh, as you said, for researching another place can make you feel like your city is actually really large when perhaps you hadn't thought about it before, <laughs> which is really nice. Um, and I also I think that says a lot about how it works as a writer and as a researcher that often 
the kinds of conclusions or thoughts you have when you're researching a project aren't the ones you entirely set out to answer. Um, and often they're kind of personal realizations, aren't they, about where you live or your environment, which is really interesting. But I love also um, the idea of you walking virtually around Norwich and kind of bumping into Liz at the cathedral. I like the idea that there's Liz on top of the um, the tower <laughs> in the nest cam and there's you walking uh, underneath it as well. And it's, it's quite, it's quite um, moving to hear both of you reading work about about Norwich, which is obviously where I am, but these places are not sites I've seen for many months because I've been staying in my immediate um, neighbourhood. Um, and there's something about that. And uh, when I was uh, preparing for this event, I was um, reading some of your poems, Liz, um, and I was reading the poems and then I looked on the, the webcam, uh, the nest cam, which I haven't looked at for a long time. Um, and it's actually re it's really really moving to have that experience of of seeing a, a view that you know but not from that perspective but you know i know the street that you can see in in the view of the nest cam and then knowing that someone else so far away is is spending so much time focusing on this place and looking at all these details um there's something in that and i can't quite find the words to articulate what that feels like but it's very um it's not uncanny because that implies kind of spookiness <laughs> which is not spooky but it's um it's just it's quite moving i think the whole where the idea of space and where people are and where people's focuses are um is is yeah it's, it's quite an interesting um outcome from this virtual residency i think um i wanted to uh, speak to you both about um how it is we write about places having not visited them um and i'm aware that there might be lots of people watching this who are either writers or researchers themselves and perhaps they might want to try this themselves um, in terms of researching things they don't have immediate access to. Um, and I was struck by, um, Liz, your provisional title for your project um, that you wrote about in your artist statement, um, the title of which is Fidelity Views. Um, and what's interesting about the word fidelity in this um, in this situation is the idea how can you kind of accurately uh, describe a place you've not been to or is accuracy even the intention does accuracy really matter and is that something that you thought of in your work as you're approaching this whether or not it is accuracy or is it maybe to honor a place um or to echo a place could you talk a bit about that sorry sure um, <laughs> if it's not sure, too esoteric I, or... <laughs> no 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 it's great um i am really interested in that like in but not so much in terms of the accuracy but in terms of the uh, shifting truth of it or something you know like the the Norwich I see is not going to be the same as the Norwich that you know just in the same way as when you're talking about Massalit and um, the revolutionary bus it's like I've got that same feeling in my heart that you were talking about that I I I have a shift towards it, but my place there is not going to be the same as anyone else's. And I'm really interested in how those places um, mm -hmm. stack on each other. But what I think um, writing wise, what I think is interesting about that is you can have enough. Um, it's not even facts. You can have enough um, truths or things that are known from a place and arrange them in your own way so that they might ring true to someone else, even when they're all constructed, yeah. you know? And this is what's so wonderful about this particular residency, I think, because it allows for this conversation to take place. Whereas you have, you know, you have your version of Norwich in your approach to the project that, as you say, is very different from my Norwich. But there is an overlap. I mean, obviously, my Norwich is very different from my neighbours, you know, Norwich. It was all very, yeah. it all exists in a kind of imaginary space. But I, I like this idea of, of you know, you're, you're kind of here with your Norwich and I'm here with mine. And there's this, this overlap in the middle where one is not quite sure of where the boundary is between that. And that's clearly mm. what is so um, wonderful about using virtual uh, and digital technology is that you, you, you can use it, you can play with it that way and you can kind of distort things and use technology like this to maybe question, question accuracy in itself. But in, by doing so, coming up with something that's actually incredibly faithful to the subject that you're writing about, which is, which is just, well, it's great. 
it's interesting as well in this respect um, with you, Martin, because obviously as a fiction writer mm -hmm. and a reporter, accuracy is incredibly important to your work. Um, and so you mentioned a little bit when you're talking about your project about how this project has made you um, perhaps think about your writing in a slightly different way because you don't have access to people and to places in the way that you would if you were reporting on somewhere. Um, but how do you navigate this idea of, of, of writing about a place without having you know, your feet on the ground there? Um, or has that given you the, like you say, the kind of possibility to do something new with your writing? Yeah, definitely. The 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 the, the second. Uh, uh, I mean, it um, well, uh, it has changed me a little bit because uh, you know, uh, as I said, I'm in the process. So I started to think about you know new possibility of also writing general, not only in this situation, but it helps me to to change myself. Uh, um, well, the other thing is, what does non-fiction writing mean? Because, mm. okay, we, 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 we can divide non-fiction non, non and fiction writing, but it's not very clear sometimes. And we, we have, for example, um, in every literature, but I, I, now I'm, I think about Polish literature, about and uh, this division and um, uh, maybe there are some people maybe maybe some readers maybe some maybe market need this division but uh, mm. but there are also many readers who don't like this division for example megan i i i, I read your book uh, and oh. uh, it's called about one Bless of you. my favorite <laughs> Uh, Robert Mapplethorpe, oh, and I, 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 I thought, well, how, how do you know that? Because you, you, <laughs> you, you, you see so many details, you know, psychological and about society and about thing, and um, but it's but it's your story. It's 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 your view mm. of Mapplethorpe of his mm. history. So the, the mm. same as Liz said, I, I think. Norwich. What, what is it? Norwich. Of course, we can, we can we can we can check, for example, somewhere what Norwich is. But I think the more important is this strong imagination. And who is the strongest? His or her imagination will be the most important, because it will be the narrative of Norwich. So it's mm. always it's always imagination. But we we have to know who we are in order to say very precisely about our perspective. So I think this is the mm -hmm. most important thing that we have to answer the first um, before writing, before um, this creative process, that we have to answer about ourselves, about who we mm -hmm. are, uh, who, you know, to, to whom we belong, to what kind of history, uh, sometimes it's not very easy to answer because we can find our roots in many unknown places, and we don't we we, we don't have a possibility to to reach them. And mm. for example, I can I can tell a little bit about my last book, which was a historical reportage on the last days before the Second World War. And I work with mm. memory of people because I want to not only use sources, I mean, printed sources as uh, daily newspapers and so on, which are very important, which was very important for me, but also memory of the people who are still alive. They are almost 100 years ago, uh, uh, old, mm. but um, they, they, they were children um, in 1939. But this is what they can, they can, they can show private lives. They can show these hidden places uh, that you cannot see in, you know, these newspaper narratives, journalist narratives, for example, mm. or uh, historical narratives. But it's also their imagination of their past mm. because they choose something, a then they don't choose another thing. So it's always about imagination. But we have to, we have to, 
we have to you know know all this context that that's what is uh, important so the answer about the truth it's, is very difficult <laughs> well it's so interesting that um you talk about your previous book in that respect because um so uh, i'm hearing is what you're saying there is that uh, the people who you interviewed for that book who are looking back on their um childhood um they're using obviously their imagination too because it's memory it's not something that they can say you know for sure happened in the way that they remembered it happening because there's that passage of time so in in many respects um their view looking back at their life is like someone being in a foreign place writing about a foreign place um because you don't have that immediacy of the moment and that that um that is interesting isn't it because then what your book becomes is uh, is not only a history of that time it's it's a it's a, a description or a nar narrative about memory and about imagination is that how you would exactly. interpret it yeah yes and yeah. It, it, it's also the narration of uh, of my view because i choose something for example i i'm also a vegetarian so i i always search for animal stories because I think it's uh, still unknown stories and, uh, for example, you know, horses, dogs and uh, other uh, animals were very helpful in making human stories all the time. And it's, um, it's I don't know, in, in appropriate that we don't know so much about animal stories. We, mm. we, we know quite a lot, but uh, we, we, need to, we need to ask about history, about animals. So it's, it's my view, it's, it's, it's my narr narration of the past, but it's also the narration of, you know, of uh, actually the situation nowadays. Uh, uh, it's about, you know, it's about present times, if you know what I mean. Mm. That it's mm. always it's like, for example, I have good uh, good example with uh, classical reading. For example, I love Virginia Woolf, and I um, uh, read her like every ten years. First, firstly, I read her when I was twenty, then uh, when I was thirty, and it was a room of, of one's own. I uh, I'm thinking about, and it was. All the time, it, it wasn't the same, you know, book. It changes because <laughs> I'm thinking. And so it's also the story of your experience because you put your own experiences mm. in, in, in the story you, you speak. Uh, and mm. it's also very, very, very important because things you research, there are a lot of details and you have to choose something mm. which are very uh, important for you. So... But and of course, our, our writing, sorry, mm -hmm. our, our writing um, mm -hmm. always uh, speaks of ourselves, even if the subject that we're writing about is is completely non biographical or, or a foreign thing to us. It's always about us, really. And I wonder what that experience is like um, uh, after you know writing something and having a big passage of time reading it again. Whether you whether one feels differently about it, I imagine. Um, that that does happen. I I don't tend to reread things, so I can say. Um, but I'm curious about that um, with regards to your poetry, Liz, and how. Um, one question I had for both of you, but I will start with Liz, is this idea of um, you're creating a sequence of poems about 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 Norwich, and I'm curious about what what that what sequence would become if you're able to come to Norwich again. Um, and I think this would both be a really interesting thing for you to do if you're able when this is over to come to Norwich and to. Um, not compare the place with what you've written, but to kind of respond to that. And and I'm kind of, do you have any expectations about what that would be like, Liz? Um, having, because also another thing is that as soon as you write something down, it becomes its own geography in its own sense. So it's it's Norwich, but of course your sequence of poems and, and March and your writing are their own landscapes and their own geographies um, that have their own realities. And so I'm curious about what, what perhaps it's not an answerable question what you would expect to happen <laughs> if you get you, you land in international <laughs> norwich international airport here you are um what happens to your imagination then has norwich got an international airport oh yeah it's norwich international airport not just any airport it, it specifies that's the international parts. <laughs> that's amazing i um i don't know if it is an answerable question i would 
but I would so <laughs> love to do it. And maybe we could all get together and have um, not a bacon roll because, you know, clearly we're all vegetarians here. But, um, you know, it would be so okay. lovely to actually okay. sit in person with you. And, yeah, everything would mm. be different. Of course it would. <laughs> mm. Mm. And, and Martin, how would you feel? Would that be an interesting experiment? Well, that, that is a very interesting question. I mean, um, well, I, I, I think Joe, uh, uh, Joe and I, Joe from Bookhive, uh, had at least three conversation, quite long, quite, quite in depth, uh, somehow. So it is like um, I, 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 now I'm thinking about this meeting with Joe, we, we, um, meeting with not only you know this Zoom view of Joe, but real Joe, and he, he's meeting <laughs> of. Um, of uh, yeah, but definitely I would I would go to Norwich and uh, I, I will do that as soon as uh, as possible, but I don't know when. But um, well, it, it will be definitely it will be different what, what I think, but it's good mm. because it's like always mm. something mm. new. You have to know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just had one more question. We're kind of running out of time here. There's so many more things I could ask you both. But um, uh, being aware again of, of people who might be watching this who are interested in, in doing what you're doing, either through residencies um, that they might want to apply for or their own residency or their own project that they want to set up of, of researching um, a place just by using virtual means. Do you have any, do both of you have any advice or tips of, of resources or things that they might want to start with um, or things they might want to consider in their planning and execution of it? I am the wrong uh, Liz, do you want to go for the planning? <laughs> sure. Well, no, sure. this is good advice, if that's, if that's your advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am terrible at planning and I've actually learned to embrace that and go with it because there's so much to be found in the melee of having, I don't know, nine or ten tabs open and not really knowing where you started or why. I think... Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think if I have to have advice out of this mouth, it would be give up the control and just see where you go with it. Yeah. That's, that's great. That's great advice. That's fantastic. And Martin, what would okay. you say? <laughs> I, I would say I'm quite good at planning, but it doesn't mean that everything is happened what I plan. <laughs> Uh, so uh, my advice would be not to not to worry when it comes to change because changing might mean something good and creative and a new start, a new beginning, and you know there, are, you know, sometimes we need a new beginning, and so here we are. We we can we can try something new. <laughs> that's, that's that's wonderful. how it like it looks like <laughs> yeah yeah that's so wonderful thank you both um so much um for anyone watching this evening who'd like to know more about our writers um who have spoken this evening and indeed the other writers who are taking part in the virtual residency then please do look at the national center for writing's website um but for now let me thank you uh, liz and marcin for speaking with me this evening and thank you all for watching thank you thank you